All right, guys, who is ready for this one? Who's been waiting on this video? All right, so back on the Bibster. Told you I was gonna bring you a Bibster video. Been working hard on this one. Uh, the work that you'll see in this video probably took me three or four days. So it's gonna look, I'm gonna make it look pretty easy, but it's not. It took me a long time. Laying out these bars takes time. Notching these bars takes time. Um, just overall, it takes a lot of time to make sure that everything is exactly like I want it. So the last video that I did on this thing, I put the, the rear main hoop in, these uh, side bars, the front bar, the dash bar, the side bars, I got all this stuff put in. On this video, I want to focus on the inner bars. So basically what I'm doing on this chassis is what they call a double frame rail setup, basically meaning that there's a set of floor bars and then a separate upper bars that run uh, the entire length of the chassis. Most chassis, at least in the drag racing world, don't have these upper bars that run the entire length of the chassis from the motor to the back. Uh, if they have any of these, usually they just kind of kick down here in the center somewhere. It allows for a little more flex. But on this particular one, it's not really a drag, it's not a drag chassis at all. But I definitely didn't want any flex. The way that the suspension is going to be on this thing, it needs to be ultra rigid. Plus, I felt like making a trans tunnel out of bars will make it really easy for me to skin this thing later on. Basically, I can just make filler panels that go in here and over the top. Uh, you know, I can put a little dome on them or something with an English wheel, but I don't necessarily need to make an entire trans tunnel. And like I said, tying the suspension into all this stuff will make it ultra strong. Uh, the way that I'm going to do the hydraulics and stuff on this thing, I needed a lot of rigidity, and this will do it. So basically, the first thing I needed to do was build a bar that mimicked what the tunnel was going to look like up front. Uh, this is pretty tricky on this build, so on a Fox body you don't have that much room anyway. And I took 8 inches out of the center of this one, so it is 8 inches skinnier than it should be, which makes things even tougher. Uh, so I, this bar really needed to be as tight as it possibly could to the trans, but I also leave enough room uh, for the transmission to be able to do its thing. The bell housing, you got you know, you got a, a clutch fork that comes out one side, you have the starter that's on the other side. I didn't really want to crowd those spaces, but I also wanted to leave as much room on the outside of that bar as I possibly could for things like the pedals and room for the passenger and that sort of thing.
All right, so I think I got the trans tunnel bar bent and marked where it needs to be notched. Now it's just time to notch it and see what it looks like back in here attached to the chassis. So once that bar was bent, I got it tacked in, got everything mocked up, made sure that everything lined up and looked like I wanted it to. Then I went on to the floor bars. And so these are pretty easy. I just kind of matched them up up front, put the needed bend where it needed to go at the amount of degrees it needed to be, and then tied it in back to these uprights back here in the back. The only thing I wanted to make sure on these on this tunnel was the width was enough for the drive shaft to fit through there without any clearance issues. Uh, but I didn't want it too wide because the driver and passenger compartment is also squeezed pretty tight. I think this side is uh, about 16 inches, the other side's about 15 inches. And so it's still going to be a little bit tight, but that's pretty normal for a hot rod. All right, so I've jumped ahead actually quite a bit. So let me kind of catch you up on what's going on. Got the engine in and I've just, uh, I've just kind of got it perched on some four by fours, but it's in the exact location that I want it. Uh, as far as how far back, I've got it squared up. It's the right height. Um, everything's exactly like I want it. And on the inside, I've basically started mocking up some tubes using some tape, uh, put the drive shaft in there so I kind of had a reference of where it would be. And this is trying to, basically this is just to try to get an idea of, of where I want the bars to be. Now I already know how I want them run, but sometimes you just got to put them in there and visualize it and see what kind of issues you're going to run into uh, along the way. And I've already ran into a couple issues I knew I would.
All right, so kind of uh, let you into my mind as far as how I think when I'm trying to figure out how to fit bars and such. So in this particular instance, I use tape to kind of lay everything out, get it like I wanted, pull my measurements, you know, figure everything out exactly like I wanted it. And then basically I can come back in here, figure out how many angles or what the angle, the degree of bends are, and what the distance is between, you know, the distances till the bend. So, um, some videos prior, I've basically showed you how I use the protractor to find the angles. Well, that only works when the bend is going up or down, or the bar is, you know, up or down. Um, when it's flush, like this floor bar is, this right here is not going to do you any good because it's not going to read uh, degrees this way. So I just use a little thing just like this. Basically, you just figure out, you know what you have laid out and then it'll actually tell you the degrees of bend that's on there. So that's what I did. I just uh, basically lined this thing up with the tape and it came up to like 19 degree bend and then what I did was I took my sample bend, laid it in here uh, where it should be and then figured out where that bend's going to start. Um, once I know those two things I'm ready to go. I can basically measure from that front post back till where that bend's gonna start. I know that that distance is like eight inches, and then I know that it needs to go, you know, 18 and a half or 19 degrees, and then, you know, the rest of the way is just straight. Once I've got it bent, then I just lay it in here, make sure it matches the tape. You know, the, the bend is right, and it kind of matches what I had in my mind. Once it does, and I just need to mark the front and the back where they need to be notched, and uh, get those done and the bars ready to go in. I usually notch them a little bit big just in case. Uh, you can always go back and notch a little bit more out but you can't really go back and add material and filling really big gaps on these uh, two chassis is not what you want to be doing. Alright so one of the techniques that I like to use to try to figure out what this angle is actually not so much to figure out what the angle is but to figure out where that notch needs to begin uh, in order for it to match up front to back as far as the length of this tube. So I'll kind of just put it next to it all the way down when I can and I'll just lay you know, some kind of straight edge up there that's um, and I'll make this thing you know parallel to this bar here and then I just mark it on this side of this uh, ruler or whatever it is I'm using and that's going to tell me where I need to notch in order to fit around this tube. It's also going to tell me um, where I need to notch for this one here as well. And then the length front to back should be the same. All right, so I have the lower trans tunnel bars in, I guess what you'll call these. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna basically do the same thing that I've done down here up top, so off of this bar. 
So it'll come, you know, probably come down a little bit. Probably kind of mimic this bar. So they'll be kind of the same. It'll kind of make a cockpit for the driver. I can set the seat in there. And then as it gets to about right here, it'll straighten out and then go all the way up to the front. When you take on a project like this, if you're doing these these bar projects, really any project, you really need to think as far ahead as you can because sometimes you'll run into issues where if you tack or weld one bar in, you're going to have a hard time getting other bars in that you need to put in there. Prime example of that is I'm going to put some up bars that match up with these lowers and tie into this uh, back bar here. Uh, it's also going to double as a uh, drive shaft loop, a rear drive shaft loop. I'll probably put some 45 kickers in there at some point, but that's going to kind of contain that drive shaft back here and then I'll actually build another drive shaft loop up here right behind the transmission. But in order to get these bars in, you know, if I just cut them straight and this was welded in, um, you would really have a hard time getting that sucker in there because it's, you know, it's fish mouth. So you can't just slide it in this way. You'd have to put it in caddy corner and kind of bead it in there to get it to fit. So what I've done is this thing is still loose. Uh, which is going to allow me to get these bars in here, make sure that everything's level and straight and tight. I can even snug this thing to the floor if I want to. Uh, once I get it all done though, then I'll tack these bars up. Then I can come over here and tack these in. Like I said, if I would have welded these in already, or this bar in already, it'd be Really hard. I mean, it, you, you could do it, but man, you wouldn't want to beat on this thing like that. Once I get those in, then I can kind of put these bars in. I don't, you know, until I get these uprights in and this thing tacked in, I can't even work on these upper bars. So that's what I'm going to do now. I may end up doing some diagonal bars back here as well, just to kind of strengthen it side to side. Uh, just kick it from the floor to here. I got to be careful though, because there's so much going on inside this thing. Um, that I don't want to put anything that's going to be in the way of what I want to do later on down the road. I mean, there's going to be a radiator back here that probably slants in like this. I got to find somewhere to put my battery. So that's probably going to go right behind the seat, one of the seats. Um, I've got some hydraulics that are going to go in here. This whole thing's going to be coil over hydraulic, I guess is the best way to put it. It's going to be coil overs, adjustable coil overs. Uh, but I want it to be cantilevered on hydraulics so I can actually set the whole thing on the ground and then raise it back up. Kind of your airbag style setup, except for it's going to be on hydraulics with coilovers. Wouldn't be against airbags on this thing. I just couldn't see an easy way to do it where the airbags were hidden. And that's kind of what I wanted is I wanted the ride height. I wanted all the mechanism to be hidden. I just wanted like just suspension hanging out there and then you lay it out and it kind of moves, transforms in some way. So, I don't know. Hopefully I can pull it off. My ideas uh, in my head work out, but sometimes when you start putting them together in bars and in chassis and sometimes you get flex that you wouldn't, you know, you wasn't really thinking about and stuff like that. So hopefully it works out. But if it does work out, there's going to be some hydraulic cylinders back here. I got a hydraulic pump that's got to go in. It'll probably go on the other side. You know, battery be on one side, hydraulic pump be on the other side. So, like I said, I gotta be really careful about how much stuff I put in here just because I wanna take up needed space.
All right, so the first upper trans tunnel bar is in. This uh, this double frame rail design, how you got an upper, an upper bar and a lower bar, is gonna make this chassis ultra stiff. And then of course, got this bar coming down, there'll be an X bar, so there'll be a bar that comes from the floor up through here and then ties in like that. So this bar will kind of mimic this angle. This bar here mimics that angle. A bar like this is ultra difficult. This is probably one of the most difficult bars to fit in here. Luckily I didn't have any issues, but it's like that because it's compound bends. So you got this bar coming down, you got a bend, it goes straight, and then once it reaches up here, not only does it have to bend up, but it also has to bend out slightly. So it's kind of a compound bend. And then you have the co complication of cutting these notches at weird angles. So that one's, you know, forward and it's at like a 45. And then this one back here, you know, is a 90 with a notch underneath it for this bar. Both of these have to match as far as angle goes. So they, so, you know, fit on both ends. So that's it for now on this. I may actually come in here at some point and put, you know, a bar from here down to there to kind of stiffen it front to back. Um, it'll have some bars that go from here to here for the uh, drive shaft loop. So they'll go down, it'll go over, up, and then over. It'll actually make a full box right there for the drive shaft loop. Probably do these out of like one inch or inch and a half inch and a quarter something smaller there's not uh much need for making all these out of inch and five eighths it's just gonna add a bunch of weight so one good thing about having this bar done uh, and i started on the passenger side for a reason there's a little bit less to deal with over here as far as you know no pedal box no uh gas pedal that sort of thing so i had a little bit more room for air or I had a little more room to fudge it if I needed to. But now that it's done, I'm hoping that it's gonna make the other side uh, much easier. Basically, I'm just gonna try to mimic that same bar. So I actually took some notes, kind of. So you can see this was the front of the bar. I just went 20 inches off the front, 20 degree bend. Then from that, the end of that bend, I went 13 and a quarter inches to the next bend, which was 22 degrees. And at the end of that bend, I went 27 degrees to the end. Total length 64 inches on the tube. And then in between the 20 degree bend and the 22 degree bend, there was a 27.4 degree twist, which was measured with that there. Another small note is also, when you look at it from up here, um, you can see that this section over here is actually smaller than what this section will be by about an inch. So this is an inch bigger, that's an inch shorter. Uh, a couple reasons for that. Obviously the driver is gonna be more important. You want more space. Uh, the other thing is, is that everything's offset to the passenger side from the factory. So the actual rear end itself is slightly offset to the right side. Uh, the way that the tranny is set up, it's slightly offset. Um, I actually offset the trans tunnel tube to the right slightly just to make enough room to put those pedals and stuff in there so but i mean it's still wide enough i actually sat in this side uh i think it's about 16 inches wide it'll be fine put the seat in there uh it'll be nice and cozy all right so let's bend the other bar and see if we can't get it fit cross your fingers it ends up just like the one i just did uh, i didn't really show a whole lot as far as film goes so now i'll kind of show you the process
These bars were gonna be a little more difficult. I knew that. Uh, you know, the lower bars are easy because you notch them, you notch them at a perfect 90 degrees on the front and the back. And then you got one bend. That one bend is, uh, you just gotta figure out where that needs to be, make sure the two bars are parallel, and then you're good to go. The upper bars are a little different because there's two bends, and they're not on the same plane. They're actually clocked off of each other. And then the back is notched one way and the front is notched separately. And so if either one of those notches is off just a little bit, you're gonna have issues with it not wanting to fit properly. So obviously these took me a lot longer to do, um, but in the end they turned out awesome. Both bars are perfectly parallel side to side. Uh, you can get down and see that everything is exactly like they should be. Um, the distance between the two bars, the uppers and the lowers, it, through the center section, they are perfectly parallel through that. Just got everything kind of tacked in for right now. Still got some more bars to add. We'll probably come back at some point and triangulate this. So it'll have uh, probably like an inch or a one, in one, one and a half inch or one inch tube that just goes from the lower section of this down to that, that junction there just to kind of triangulate this back half. Uh, we'll obviously have some bars that go down here, probably use inch and five eighths for that, and that will do my um, drive shaft loop section, so I'll have a bar that goes down and across right there. And we'll probably add some bars up front to kind of stiffen the front section. What's next is that I'll have bars that come off that main trans hoop that will go down and be the actual engine mounts themselves. So the engine will mount to these tubes, the tubes will be mounted to this cross member and then that'll kind of transfer through to these tubes so it'll be like one long continuous chassis component because these bars don't go all the way through that tunnel mount as one continuous bar I'll probably gusset those in a way that kind of strengthens it and uh, it's not a hundred percent reliant on just those welds that hold everything together some of the things I'll be working on here in the near future is the rear suspension so it's just gonna be like a triangulated four link in the rear um, just gonna use custom Himes uh, with some one and a half inch chrome molly I'll be able to make that whatever length I want you know left-handed thread on one side or right-handed thread on the other side so I'll have some adjustability uh, just tie those into this to these bars here probably and then on the front I've got some really craziness gonna go on up front as far as suspension goes um, not 100% sure I can pull it off, but I'm going to try. Uh, the idea behind this thing, I mentioned it before in some of the videos, the idea behind this thing is that I'll be able to lay it out 100% with hydraulics. So it's going to be like a hydraulic over coil over setup, uh, be cantilevered on the rear, the front, the actual strut towers themselves will move hydraulically. And so, you know, when you lay it out, the towers themselves will fold up body lays on the ground and it should kind of have a wicked look to it when it does that so I gotta start on both of those like I said gotta work on the motor mounts and that sort of thing next uh, gotta figure out how I'm gonna mount the steering rack gotta make some tube chassis braces for the turbo itself once I kinda get a lot of that kinda stuff tacked in and I don't really need the body on the chassis no more. I'll actually separate the body off of the chassis uh, for two reasons. For one, it'll be easier to weld the chassis together and add the extra bars that I need. I can actually raise this thing up off the floor, add the little bars that I know I wanna add that I know aren't gonna be in the way of the body. And then the second thing is, is I can actually strip the body itself. So this entire body will be bare metal. I'm gonna take the SCT after it, try to get as much as I can bare uh, do the doors, the top, um, go in here and maybe fix a little bit of this stuff. Once all that's done, body will go back on and then I'll start permanently mounting the body to the chassis. I'm uh, going to tie it in up here probably just kind of give it some rigidity this way. Uh, it's obviously tied in a bunch up front already. And then once that's done, I can start making custom panels for it. I really, really plan on spending a lot of time on the custom panels in this thing. As you see it coming together, it's starting to look really cool. What's gonna take it over the top, I'm hoping, are the custom panels. Gonna mix up carbon fiber and sheet metal, a lot of rivets, um, you know, custom seats, custom back section, 
As I've said in previous videos, it'll have a rear mounted radiator that should go right in here somewhere. So I'm gonna make some sheet metal carbon fiber ducting for that. It's gonna get uh, it's gonna get very interesting as this thing starts to come together. But priority number one is just to kind of get this thing as a roller. That's my main goal right now. So I can kind of roll it around, maybe take it to pits like I'd mentioned before, and uh, I don't know. Just ready for this thing to be mobile. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this week. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you can get an idea of what I'm going for in this thing. I'm sure this build's gonna be one of those deals where you'll envision it in a certain way, and then as I make progress, that vision will kind of change to match mine a little bit closer, and then in the end, we'll be, we'll be on the same page. As always, if you wanna follow this build in real time, go follow me on Instagram or Snapchat. I'm posting a lot of stuff on there of this build prior to the videos coming out. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son. Thank you.